How much do you know about the Fanac Robo Drill turning application? Well, we're here to find out from Andy, who is the master of all things Fanac. <laughs> now, Andy, what can you tell me about this machine before we get into the turning solution you've got? Well, this turning solution is mounted to a Fanac Robo Drill. So, this is a long bed machine. Long, the biggest machine or robo drill that Fanuc do, 700 millimeters in the x-axis, and we've coupled it to a Nikon DD201 HSR table, so high-speed rotary. So, what are these machines generally used for, and what industries are you seeing them going into? Well, that, that's the great thing about a Fanuc robo drill because there, there's a place for a Fanuc robo drill in every workshop. <laughs> if I had my own business, I'd be having one in my garage for sure. Um, but no, in, in all seriousness, there is. They're, they're such a versatile platform. We've got the choice of a 10K or 24,000 RPM spindle, different column heights to put the Z axis where you need it, different size machines to fit everyone's requ requirements in terms of space, all in a very uh, small footprint and a extremely low energy consumption platform. So, Now, I want to talk about the energy consumption, but before that, mm -hmm. you've actually trust me <laughs> to press the green button and I have to say, this will be the first time I've ever started a Fanuc machine. Yep. Yeah, yeah now, go for it. If this goes wrong, you can't blame me. <laughs> now, talking about energy efficient, yeah. how does this machine help people be more green? Well, for a start, um, Fanuc have got the capacity to build nearly 3,000 of these a month. So, in terms of efficiency of production and making sure that the machine is as lean as possible in terms of its manufacturing process, they've got that sorted. So from the ground up, it's a very, very um, efficiently made platform. So that takes care of that. The machine itself has got a power regeneration module in it. So when the spindle's deaccelerating, it will be putting that excess power back into the servo system. Um, and apart from that, it's a very small and dynamic machine. Therefore, it uses, well, uh, less than eight kilowatts of power during the course of this one day at this show. Now, that's madness to me because obviously eight kilowatts, that's, that's going to be less than most machines use in a morning. Yeah. Never mind a full yeah, day. Yeah. And, and let's not get this wrong. This machine is running all day. It yeah. was only stopped because... You were waiting for us to start this, but this yeah. has been running all day. Yeah, we've, we've had it dry cycling. We've got a number of billets. We've made two or three today for specific customer demos. Uh, we've just done another one now. Uh, but yeah, essentially the machine's been dry cycling through that routine and it uses between seven and a half and eight kilowatt hours of power uh, pretty much. Yeah. And let's be honest, everybody loves the numbers. So now we've, we've spoke about the machine. We've spoke yep. about how it can help save customers money. Mm -hmm. Now let's go on to the bit people might not know too much about yep. on how you've actually made this machine more productive and also go into sectors it may not have been in before yep. with the turning application. Yeah, so like, like we've explained before, there is a place for a robo drill in pretty much every workshop. It's in its standard form, it's a three axis VMC. Don't be fooled by the name robo drill. It's a fully fledged milling platform capable of some very, very um, heavy milling at times if you want it to. But the fact that it's such a versatile platform means that we can apply it in different sectors. With the addition of the turning table, that's just opened up the whole world. You know, <laughs> the world is our oyster now. You know, we've got a beautifully fast and efficient machine coupled with an extremely robust Nikon table. Um, oil cooled so we can run it at 1500 RPM all day long, not have any issues. Uh, and couple it with five axis milling as well. So what benefits does that give a customer? I think the benefits really, what, what we don't want to do is put a peripheral piece of equipment onto our machine that is of, say, a lesser quality than the build of the machine itself. So we've got an extremely reliable platform in the robo drill. We want our pieces of uh, third party options, shall we say, nick and table in this case, to be as reliable as the machine. Uh, and the nick and product is just that, it's extremely reliable. Um, and the, the turning function just allows us to do so much more with the machine. We can truly multitask. Um, it opens up markets, so, so we've got um, you know, elect electronic motor housings that we can uh, machine the large plane diameter bores uh, before we may have used large PCD reamers to do that, which take an awful lot of torque to drive. 
Um, so we want to be able to use the machine to its maximum advantage, maybe use the 24,000 RPM spindle for efficiently machining other features on that, and then just turn those bores rather than using a large diameter reamer that would have needed the 10K spindle, for example. And let's look at some of the other benefits this could bring. Mm -hmm. A, normally you would have turned that part on a, on, a, on a lathe yep. and then brought it onto the mill, which brings its own set of problems. It does, yeah. You've got to clock it up, you've got to get it perfectly right. If it's not perfectly right when you've got it on the table, when you then machine it, it's going to be out. So there's, there's them benefits as well as, also you would look at this sort of application and think, oh, I need a mill turn machine. And some of them are quite large. They are. You may not have the space. So it's keeping the, space, the size down, but also helping you with tolerances and I'm going to try and get this word right, but concentricity as well. Yeah, concentricity. I mean, if you can, the more features you can machine in one setup, the better, isn't it? You know, you've you've got uh, tolerances get tighter all the time. Designers are looking to eke out the last little bit of performance in a product, which normally gets pushed down to the manufacturer as tighter tolerances <laughs> to control clearances to make things better. So we as manufacturers, we can only push back so much. We want to be able to take on the challenge of trying to machine those difficult parts. Uh, and the more, more things you can do in one setup, the better, isn't it? In terms of you know, you know, tying up the turn into all the mill features, we'll just do that all in one hit on the machine now and, and keep, the, keep all those features nicely controlled and tight together. So, final question. Yeah. What advice would you give somebody who has looked at the robo drill, and I'm going to say it, and I know it's a really unpopular opinion, but mm -hmm. everybody always says it, a sort of a machine for your lighter materials, yeah. your plastics, your aluminiums, and don't get me wrong, I've seen what you've done on this machine, so. Well, you, you're completely right, and uh, you know, that's, that's people's general perception. Uh, I think the people that have bought machines and have seen what they can do in terms of material removal understand that it's, it's far more a heavier duty machine than it's, perhaps its size and diminutive nature uh, imply. Um, we're starting to do an awful lot more material uh, machining and uh, research in our application centre down at Coventry uh, to prove to people that this machine can drill holes as small as 70 microns. You can put a 40 mil U drill in it, you can put a 16 mil uh, ripper in it, you can drill a half a mil hole at, hole at 50D if you want to. And, and everything in between, in materials like alloy steels, stainlesses, um, silicon carbide, you know, stuff that's really difficult to machine. The control system we've got, the platform we've got, we just do it. And the know-how that you need, and we try to educate our customers and potential customers by showing them and proving that the machine can do it.